Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm drawing this. Alright guys, how you doing? So today I'm drawing, um, I have an idea for a, a personal project that I want to do. Um, and I want to design a character, design what my character looks like and what her beast that she flies on looks like. Um, so I'm just going to work through that. And, and while that's going on, um, there's some things I want to talk about today. And the topic today actually gets a little personal. And it delves into ideas and inspirations I don't usually talk about in a public forum. Namely, religion and my faith. Now, as a rule, I stay out of politics and religion in any of my online interactions, but I couldn't talk about what motivates me to do what I do today without bringing up my personal beliefs. Uh, I guess it'd be kind of like talking about high-performance sports cars. What's their top speed, uh, aerodynamics, acceleration, uh, their fuel use, but, neglect uh, but neglecting to mention their engines. So if you like my work and my thoughts on art, then I hope you'll not only appreciate what I talk about today, but even find it inspirational to some degree. And as always, guys, be respectful and cool in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. Okay, so today I'm talking about my personal manifesto. But before I get into that, what exactly is a manifesto? The way I understand it is it's a declaration of one's intentions or motives. It's a list of objectives that you fall back on when you feel like you're losing your direction. When you're faced with any decision, your personal manifesto helps you cut through the BS and gets you to the heart of what you should do or not do. So what drives me to do what I do? What's my core purpose and focus? What's the driving force getting me up every day and motivating me to work long hours and late nights? What influences every decision I've made with my career, from moving my family across the country to take a job at an animation studio to making this very video today? So I boiled it down to these three objectives that help me decide what's important to do and what's not. And they are first, objective number one, provide a healthy, safe, and comfortable life for my family. Objective number two, Create work that inspires, edifies, or contributes positively to our culture. And objective number three, teach others to be able to do what I do. So it's important to note here that these three objectives are in an order of importance. I can't complete a lower objective at the expense of the one preceding it. All right, so let's get into each of these specifically um, what they mean and what they are. Objective number one is is basically provide for my family. Now I've always wanted a family and my wife did too so we started one early. Instead of waiting for my career to be more established which I don't even know how you define that but whatever we decided to be young parents and play when we were older instead of playing when we were young and having toddlers in our late 30s and early 40s. Uh, I just wasn't into having kids when I was older. <laughs> I wanted to be I want to be a young dad that can like run around with them and and play with them and stuff. So so that's why we started a family young. Um, now growing up, I I've known and and even now I know some fathers who aren't very good at providing for their families. And also growing up, I've seen things that families went without. Um, and and I decided that I would do whatever it took to provide a safe and comfortable life for my family. I wanted to be able to give them a home, new clothes, opportunities to do extracurricular activities, vacations, and of course insurance and full bellies. The only problem is I'm only really good at one thing, drawing. Now you've heard the term starving artist before, right? Up until my early 20s, I think I had only met one artist who was providing a stable lifestyle for his family. Every other artist I knew did it as a hobby or on the side of a real job. And it was scary to me to think that the only thing I was really good at had the odds stacked against me in being lucrative to any degree. However, when I looked at my options, it was either go full throttle on the one thing I was good at with no plan B, or it was become a dishwasher and deciding I had nothing to lose, I became an artist. 
And so every art job I took for a long time was primarily for financial reasons. The animation industry was about as stable as an artist could hope for. CG animation has been booming for the last 20 years. And so I worked at animation studios, which provided health benefits and a steady income. A few years into it, I looked around and I noticed something. Um, I noticed that the majority of the people I worked with were around my same age. And I wondered, where are the guys in their 50s? A handful of these senior guys had the same job I had, albeit they were getting paid more than I was. Uh, but everyone else who was in that age group had either moved up to jobs that required less and less drawing and more and more managing, or they, uh, they left the industry altogether. Now, I couldn't see myself doing either of those former options. I couldn't see myself still working in a cubicle 20 years later, and I couldn't see myself moving up into an art director or a director position where I'm just calling shots and I'm not actually creating artwork myself. Um, it's, and it's because those two things kind of went against my second objective, and that was to be putting, to cre be creating art that, that put beautiful things into the world. And I'll get into more of that later. So, so I decided to leave the animation industry. Now this meant that my earning potential didn't have a ceiling, but it also meant I'd have to work harder, and I was okay with both those things. I took a hit after leaving, uh, the animation world and it was rough for a couple years but now it's five years after leaving my job at Blue Sky and I'm making way more money on my own than the raise they offered me to stay at the company so it's working out going this direction okay so objective two objective one was was providing for my family being able to make money doing the thing that I'm good at okay objective two is this create work that inspires, edifies, or contributes positively to our culture. This one is important to me because of the profound effects so many great movies, books, and illustrations have had on me. Uh, because these things have shaped my views and they've connected with me on uh, an emotional level, um, and not only that, but they've broadened my understanding and appreciation for the, the human condition, I myself feel obligated to use my own talents and my own abilities to create works that do the same thing for others. Um, and part of the reason that I feel this way is because of my faith. Now I was raised Mormon uh, with a love for Christ and the way that he lived his life. And I loved his stories and his parables that he, that he shared in the New Testament. And the parable of the talents is probably one that has had the most impact on me. Uh, it had a huge impact on me when I when I heard it as a young child, and it still affects me to this day. So if you don't know the parable of the talents, it's this. Uh, it's about a master who has three servants. He gives one servant five talents. He gives one servant two talents, and he gives the last servant only one talent. Now, a talent in ancient and biblical times was one of the largest units of financial measurement. Uh, the Greeks considered talent to be equivalent of nine or ten man years of skilled work. Okay, and as a side note, um, in Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, I don't know if you've read it, but in it he poses a theory that what we sometimes assume is a talent is actually hours upon hours of training and execution, 10,000 to be exact. After about 10,000 hours of doing something, you can consider yourself a master of that thing. And typically a person gets to 10,000 hours by working on something for about four hours a day, five days a week for roughly 10 years. So a biblical talent very literally is a, monetarily, uh, a monetary equivalent of someone's mastery of a particular craft. And I thought that was kind of cool that um, in the olden days we associate, they, they associated talent with, with money and with skilled labor, uh, the equivalent of skilled labor, and nowadays we associate talent with someone's ability as well. Okay, so anyway, the master gives his servants these fortunes, and he tells them to make the most out of them. And the first two go, and they work hard, and they do their job, and they bring back double what he gave them. The, the, five, the guy who had five talents brings back ten. The guy who had two talents brings back two. And for that, they were rewarded by being put into these positions of power in the master's kingdom. Okay, 
But the last one, he was so worried that he'd lose his talent, he buried it in the ground. And and when he returned, he still only had the one talent. Okay, and that made the master super angry. And he casts a servant out and he gives him nothing. So the initial takeaway might be that this master was using his servants to grow his money. But in reality, the way I see it is the master was using his money to grow better servants that he could put into posi uh, positions of responsibility in his kingdom. And I feel like I've been given this talent of drawing well. I think I was born with a God-given predisposition to be able to turn the things I see in my head into images on paper or pixels. I've taken that and I've worked hard at it, trying to double what's been given me. Not just by trying to become better, better at my craft, but trying to create really cool things with it. And that leads me to one of the core tenets of the Mormon faith. And it can be found in a creed called the Articles of Faith, uh, which was composed way back in 1842 by Joseph Smith himself. The 13th Article of Faith says, quote, If there's anything virtuous, lovely, or of good report, or praiseworthy, we seek after these things, unquote. Now, I've always loved that. And I use that as a bar of excellence by which uh, I not only choose what media I consume myself, but also what I create and put out into the world. And that's what I'm striving for. I'm striving to create work that is virtuous in that it's not gratu gratuitously violent or sexual. I'm striving to create work that is lovely in that it appeals not just to the eye, but to the heart as well. And it has a charm and a level of uh, awesomeness to it. I'm striving to create work that is of good report in that people love it so much they want to tell their friends about it. Uh, I think that's why I love social media so much because it, it enables this idea of good report that you see something cool and you can instantly share it with others. And I'm striving to create work that is praiseworthy in that it's worthy of the admiration from others or in a way um, it's, it's critically successful. Okay, so the parable of talents and the 13th article of faith are key in the second objective of my manifesto. Uh, to put it simply, I've been given much, therefore I'm trying to give back even more. And if I do this part right, it should be profitable to some degree, which directly enforces the first objective of my manifesto. Alright, so objective number three. I want to teach others to be able to do what I do. While the first two objectives in my manifesto were things that I've dealt with for almost as long as I've been a professional, this last one is something fairly new. When I left the animation world, I took a job teaching at BYU in Utah uh, in their illustration program. And there the fire to teach was ignited inside of me. I love being able to pass on my knowledge to a new generation of artists. I love not just teaching them the craft of illustration and drawing, but also the business of it. How to build a career out of something you love and not just have it be a side hobby. One of the uh, unanticipated side effects of that was that I, I found myself leveling, leveling up in my own work. It was amazing to see the amount of improvement happening with my students was also happening in my own work. However, another unanticipated side effect was I found myself spending most of my creative capital on teaching others and realized that I had a creative deficit when it came time to work on my own projects. There just wasn't any energy left at the end of the day. And since my manifesto says that a lower objective can't take away from the one preceding it, I decided to ease off on teaching to focus more on my own projects. Now since then I found a couple of solutions that meet my third objective, and it's making these YouTube videos and also recording classes for svslearn.com. I really love making these videos, and I hope you all are getting as much out of them as I put into them. No, I sometimes miss my mark. My, my goal is to do one a week. Um, and if I miss a week, it's usually because making the video will get in the way of objectives one and two. I'm still trying my hardest to, to, to make these videos the best that they can be. Um, now about SVS. I started svslearn.com two years ago with Will Terry. He's another illustrator in my local area here. And we both love teaching. But we didn't like the fact that in a university setting, you could only teach a handful of students at one time. I think the most students I ever taught was 21 or 22 in a class. Um, 
And also, I couldn't give up a full semester at a time to teach because of the amount of work I had committed to. So we decided to launch a class online that we could do live for a, a handful of students. It would be a condensed version of what we were teaching at a university, and we would pack everything we teach in a semester in a few weeks of classes. Uh, we would then record it and make it available for whoever else wanted to watch it. So the class was a success, and we decided to do another, and then another, and then another. The problem facing me was I wanted these classes to be accessible to even more people, but because of the amount of time I was putting into them, uh, it meant I had to turn down a few jobs, which meant I had to charge a high enough price to uh, people who were taking the classes that it, it actually it compensated for the work I was turning down. So now that SVS has been going for over two years and that we have well over a hundred hours of video content, we decided that it was it was time to switch to a subscription model. And the idea being that um, that for a low monthly subscription fee, anyone who wanted it, uh, an all access pass to any class could could be able to to afford it. Okay, so basically for the price of a nice lunch. People can take any of my online classes for as long as they're subscribed. And the hope with this is that enough people subscribe that it ends up paying for more classes coming down the line and makes it worth the time I put into it. Uh, so SVS classes meet my objectives in that it, it makes money. Um, it, uh, the classes are of high quality or I guess praiseworthy, right? And then they also teach others the things that I've learned. So it's a win-win-win. Okay, so I guess to review the three objectives really simply, number one, provide for my family, number two, make great art, and number three, teach others. And those are my objectives to my manifesto, okay? So what are the objectives that make up your manifesto? I actually really want to know. Um, post it in the comments. If you've, if you've figured out what your manifesto is, I'd, I'd love to hear it. I want to hear what other people's manifestos are. If you haven't yet, how do you figure that out? Um, I, want, I want you to start by asking yourself these three questions. Number one, what do you want to accomplish in life? Okay. Number two, what do you like to do? Number three, what are you really good at doing? Okay. So it took me years to really nail this manifesto down and it could pro probably take you years to do it as well. But I know that answering those three questions is going to get you closer uh, to nailing down your own manifesto, uh, and it can help you have a more focused and, I think, impactful life, okay? By devoting your life to something that not only helps yourself, but helps others, you'll have put yourself squarely on the path to success, and I think that's what we all want to do. Um, Okay, so again, if you have your manifesto figured out, post it in the comments. If you have any thoughts or ideas on anything I said here today, I'd love to hear them. And um, we'll see you next time. Hey guys, all right, here's the finished artwork. And I just want to apologize for not showing any of the markering that I did. Uh, I just didn't have time for that to do the whole video. And I wanted the video mostly focused on the initial sketching stage, uh, just to kind of show some of the stops and starts that I had with some of the components of the of the sketch. Anyway, I want to thank everyone who subscribed, but more importantly, I want to thank everyone who's been leaving comments. Um, there's been some great discussion going on in, in a lot of the different video threads, um, and, and there's been a lot of really good questions. I haven't been able to answer them all, but I will be answering them in future videos. Uh, I've got another video lined up next uh, where I am actually showing a lot of my marker work. Uh, so be expecting that, seeing the marker, hearing answers. And I just want to say, if you haven't ever left a comment, if you've been lurking, this would be a great video for you to, to leave a comment or maybe answer some of the questions that I posed at the end of it. I'd, I'd love to hear from everyone who's been watching these videos what motivates you, what gets you uh, out of bed in the morning. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to hear that. Uh, anyways, I will see you next video. It's coming soon.